I have to come back again to a story I broke here last week because today there's been the most bizarre response, a frightening response actually, from a Morrison government minister. And the response that makes me worry about the future of this country, to be honest. Now, twice now on this show, I have discussed the so called Aboriginal historian Bruce Pascoe and the bizarre claims in his best selling book, Dark Emu, a book that's won the New South Wales Premier's Award for Book of the Year. This is a book that's going to next year be made into an ABC series, and a child's version is already going into schools. This is my latest book, Young Dark Emu, and it, it's a story about what Aboriginal people were really doing when Europeans arrived onto the continent. It's about our agricultural industry. Yes, this Aboriginal historian makes incredible claims that Aborigines actually had an agricultural industry, huge fields of crops, uh, big silos of grain, towns of up to a thousand people with beautiful houses, with animal pens and, well, if you haven't seen any evidence of that, that's because it's all destroyed by wicked whites. And to prove all this happened, Pascoe claims to quote from the diaries of explorers like Charles Sturt and Thomas Mitchell. But as I've shown in two shows and in my columns and on my blog, Pascoe doesn't quote these explorers so much as rewrite them. Totally. And I've given you examples. Sturt, for instance, in his 1849 book, wrote of seeing three or four hundred Aborigines in huts out past Cooper Creek. But Pascoe, in fact, claimed that Sturt found not 400 Aborigines, but a thousand. Not in huts, but in beautiful houses with those animal pens. Keeping which animals uh, <laughs> way up there, Pascoe doesn't bother to explain. Sturt then writes how he left peacefully these Aborigines, been quite nice to him, and no one knows what became of them afterwards. But in Bruce Pascoe's version, his reinvention, they are murdered. If you're not moved by that, and if you're not moved by the fact that those people were murdered shortly afterwards, then you have indeed a very hard heart. Now, there are dozens and dozens of examples of this reinvention. Go to the website darkemuexposed.org, dashes between the words, darkemuexposed.org, and you'll find so much more. It's mind-boggling. Now, I thought that after publicising this, I would hear the ABC say, look, that series we planned with Bruce Pascoe, this history one, cancelled. I thought I'd hear government ministers say, well, this invented history, not in our schools, thank you. But instead, I heard today Ken Wyatt, who's the Morrison government's Minister for Indigenous Australians. And I have to say, I was shocked by his defence of Bruce Pascoe's trash Pascoe's fantasy, according to Wyatt, is actually the kind of stuff that should be taught more. Bruce Pascoe's book has certainly created an interest at a very different level because he takes a series of propositions from research, has put them into a book, and that has challenged people's thinking. So schools should play an important role in ensuring that uh, the shared history uh, of a community in which they, they're placed is reflected in some of the teaching that occurs. Excuse me, Minister, what about the evidence that Pasco totally misquoted the evidence, even invented it? Here's Ken Wyatt again when Sky News' Chris Kenny put exactly that to him. Well, I think when we go through library collections, we look at public records, we look at diaries that are in, held in collections, what what comes out of that and percolates to the surface are the entries that are made that would probably substantiate uh, those points that he makes within his book. I know Bruce and I know the work that he does and he has an incredible knowledge of our history uh, and he would have referenced uh, sources that he thought were credible. Minister, 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 Minister. What it's got is a wonderful inventive mind, I get, give you that much. But when we look at the diaries, we don't say they substantiate Pascoe's claims. They expose his inventions. 
But what you just saw there was the invincible ignorance of the Identity Politics Brigade. The facts don't count. The facts are what you say they are. For instance, Pasco calls himself Aboriginal. He won a state prize for best Indigenous author. He's now a professor in an Aboriginal education faculty, one of our universities. But what about the genealogical evidence that suggests that Pasco's ancestors, in fact, do not include one single Aboriginal? Of course, there may be an error here because there might be an illegitimate birth somewhere that the records don't show. But otherwise, what they do show is that every single one of Pascoe's ancestors is British ancestry. And Pascoe refuses to tell me which one of them is Aboriginal. Again, though, do not bother the minister with evidence. If Bruce tells me he's Indigenous, then I know that he's Indigenous because he would not be making that claim knowing that he would know both of his family lines. This is where we are now with the identity politics. How can you disprove anything if all that counts is a mate's word? He looked at me, told me X. Of course, all the evidence is not X. Sounds a bit like the George Pell trial. Then there was this from the government minister. This gov is a minister in the government, Ken Wyatt. This appeal to the new victim culture. A suggestion that even asking a very white complexioned Bruce Pascoe for evidence that he is Aboriginal, well, that's not just rude, it's possibly racist. We never, we never say to a Jewish person, demonstrate your Jewishness. We never say to an Italian, demonstrate your Italianness. But we tend to do that frequently in this country, and we do it with Indigenous Australians. I've never heard anybody question the ethnicity of another Australian who says they're Greek or they're per Peruvian or whatever. Minister, just drop your victim complex. For a start, what you just said is absolutely false. Have you forgotten the huge scandal when a book about Ukrainian Nazis won Australia's top three literary awards? And it was a book by a woman, Helen Demidenko, claiming to be a Ukrainian herself, to give it a little bit more authenticity. In fact, she was Helen Dale, daughter of English parents. Huge fuss. And for this reason, critics thought that Helen Dale had pretended to be Ukrainian to get an advantage to sell more books. And here's the other problem with your complaint, Minister. In this country, there's actually not much to gain from calling yourself Italian if you're not, you know? No special prizes or jobs. But in Australia, calling yourself Aboriginal apparently gives you a special moral status in some areas and, sure, buys you immunity from criticism. We've well, just seen this, haven't you? And there are also special prizes, there are awards, there are grants, there are academic jobs and handouts of some kind... Um, and other positions just for Aborigines and often paid for by taxpayers. And that is why there is this interest in the truth of some people's claims. And, you know, we have been played before. Bobby Sykes, for instance, the activist writer, and she was called the first Aboriginal woman to study at Harvard, appointed to all sorts of positions, actually from an African-American background. Colin Johnson, he was the much-hailed author of Wildcat Falling, marketed as the first Aboriginal novel, became a professor too. Um, he was actually of African-American background, say his family. And Wanda Kulmatri, who could forget who? Her, the female Aboriginal author of My Own Sweet Prize, a Time, uh, another prize-winning book, of course. Well, Wanda turned out to be actually the male white writer Leon Carmen. And the Aboriginal male painter Eddie Burrup, nice pictures, turned out to be the white female painter and writer Elizabeth Durack. So I have to ask, what is so racist about asking Bruce Pascoe for evidence of his Aboriginality? Or for evidence of his preposterous theories, more to the point. But there I go again, thinking that Australia today does care about truth. When in fact, it seems, reason is dead, and certainly dead, to Minister Ken Wyatt.